here's your wrestling news for June 2nd, 2021. And your headlines for today include, Vince McMahon orders WWE superstars to get additional training, superstars react. Kofi Kingston received medical attention during commercial on WWE Raw. Drew McIntyre looked rough after match against Kofi Kingston on WWE Raw. Nature of McIntyre's injury revealed. Is Sheamus planning to vacate US title after injury on WWE Raw? Status of Molly Holly's backstage tryout at WWE. Awesome Kong is officially no longer with AEW. Real reason for her absence is revealed. Wrestler is gone from AEW after allegations of mistreating extras. Fast 9 tanks in China after John Cena controversy and more. We're kicking off with WWE who's going back on the road next month with a 25-city tour with live fans, and some superstars aren't apparently looking their best right now. According to a report from PW Insider, WWE has informed superstars that they are expected to attend the Performance Center over the next few weeks to do in-ring workouts. It was reported that these workouts are being done to better prepare superstars for the return of fans, and this is believed to be a Vince McMahon edict. It's unclear who or how many superstars will have to participate in these workouts, which could start as soon as this week, but it appears that these workouts haven't gone down well backstage. PW Insider reports that those superstars are looking forward to getting back to normal, they're not thrilled about rolling around in the ring on their day off, but are willing to do what it takes to get back on the road. This isn't the first time WWE has sent superstars to the Performance Center, as big men like Keith Lee, Otis, and Omas were sent for conditioning last December, but with most, if not all, superstars expected to attend these workouts, WWE clearly wants to make sure everyone is ready ahead of the return to live fans on July 16th. Raw news next as Kofi Kingston came up short this week in his WWE Championship No. 1 Contenders match with Drew McIntyre, and the New Day star got pretty hurt in the process. During the match, Kingston and McIntyre did a spot on the outside of the ring which left Kingston screaming in agony, and according to new Raw commentator Jimmy Smith, the former world champion was immediately checked on by WWE's medical crew as Smith explained on Busted Open Radio. When Kofi Kingston against Drew McIntyre went over that wall, he literally did catch his leg on the wall and started screaming, and we all went, oh crap, you know? They rushed back there to help him get up in time for the commercial, and he got up and was like, dude, I'm good, let's go. Insane. Insane watching it live. Thankfully, Kingston was able to continue the match, even if he didn't win it, whilst Smith, who received praise from fans and WWE personnel for his debut on commentary, had an intense first night on the job. Kofi got pretty banged up during this match with McIntyre, but despite winning, even the Scottish superstar didn't leave the Thunderdome unscathed. According to PW Insider, McIntyre looked rough after the match was over, sporting a big bruise over his right eye, which happened when he ate a super kick from Kingston that made real contact. It was said that the match was received well backstage, with many people praising the two for the war they put themselves through, but ultimately, it was McIntyre who got the win, earning himself a WWE Championship match against Bobby Lashley on June 20th at Hell in a Cell. More injury news next as the United States champion Sheamus broke his nose this week against Umberto Carrillo, but that won't stop him competing. On Twitter, Sheamus made it clear that he's not vacating the US title despite posting a selfie of his broken nose, which is swollen up. This week's Raw saw Sheamus face Ricochet and Umberto Carrillo, and it was a kick to the face by Carrillo that did the damage. The big question is who will Sheamus face next, and we imagine a receipt is coming Carrillo's way, but it'll take a lot more than a broken nose for the Irish superstar to vacate his title. There was plenty of action on screen during this Memorial Day edition of Raw, but there was plenty more happening behind the scenes. We previously reported that WWE Hall of Famer Molly Holly was at Raw this week, trying out for a producer role, and according to PW Insider, this went very well for the former women's champion. Their report notes that Holly is being taken through the paces as a producer, as both she and WWE will continue feeling each other out as they work together. 
Molly has a lot to provide backstage in terms of knowledge of the business, especially WWE, and with WWE looking for more producers as they head back on the road, we'll have to see if the former sidekick gets a job offer from WWE. At AEW Double or Nothing, Mark Henry made his debut for the company after speaking only for a long time about wanting to contribute more to the wrestling industry. For years, Henry has been wanting to do more in WWE and even spoke to Vince McMahon about doing more in WWE. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Henry explained that his deal was up with WWE and that for the past six months, he's been vocal about wanting a position in WWE's offices, an idea that McMahon was on board with Henry doing more in TV, as he explained, I talked to Vince himself and he said, write it up, you're somebody I'll listen to. Though McMahon was ready to use Henry Moore, the world's strongest man explained that impending cuts were the reason for his release, and though Henry felt safe in his role, he realized he could do more for wrestling outside of WWE. Speaking about the chairman and former employer, Henry had nothing but good things to say about Vince McMahon. Vince and I have love for each other. More than love, respect. Me calling him and saying what need to be said came from a place of a brother telling his older brother, I'm tired of being in shadows, I feel like someone beneath you is holding me back. If someone is holding me back, I have to go. I feel like I was being held back and not getting what I want, and if I want to be successful and earn more, Vince said, you know everything you need to know, if you feel like you need to go, I don't necessarily want it, but if you need to go, then go. I know you'll be successful. That's what you want. I'm not going to run from a conversation like that. Nobody will say Mark Henry is unloyal. There were times I was offered more money and I didn't leave. Everything wasn't perfect, but what family is perfect? I had a good experience and I learned a lot. I spent more time in production and the trucks than I did around the ring and in catering. I always had an executive mindset. Henry has made it clear he wants to wrestle again, something that could now happen in AEW, especially as he signed a multi-year deal with the promotion, which will allow him to be a commentator on Rampage and work in talent development too. We already know that he'll be an analyst on AEW Rampage when it premieres on August 13th, but what do you think of Henry's jump to AEW? Let us know in the comments. More from AEW as recently, Cody Rhodes released a special t-shirt for Pride Month featuring his logo in the rainbow colors, but this shirt drew the ire of some fans. This new shirt, which will see all profits donated to the National Center for Transgender Equality, caused one fan to call Cody out, asking why it couldn't be an AEW Pride shirt, and questioned why Cody needed to have his name attached to it. The fan went on to question why the shirt doesn't feature LGBTQ plus talents like Sonny Kiss, who is gender fluid, or Nyla Rose, who is transgender, and this fan clearly touched a nerve with Brandy Rhodes. Responding, AEW's chief brand officer said that Cody was the one person who said he'd make a shirt for charity, and that anyone in AEW who wants to make a charity shirt can do so. Brandy avoided answering why the company doesn't have an official AEW rainbow design, and we'll have to see how many other wrestlers take her up on the offer and make their own charity shirts in the future. One person who won't be releasing any AEW shirts is Awesome Kong, as the company has parted ways with the former Knockouts champion. Kong hadn't appeared for the company for about 16 months after sustaining an injury whilst filming the final season of GLOW, which was nixed after two episodes because of the ongoing situation. Kong wasn't clear to compete, and AEW pushed the split of Brandy Rhodes' Nightmare Collective after that. Kong joined AEW at Double or Nothing 2019, but hasn't competed since the January 7, 2020 AEW Dark, where she defeated Skylar Moore. She also served as a coach for the company, though Fightful reports that she wasn't around much after she wasn't cleared to wrestle. Dave Meltzer was the first to report Kong's release, which was later confirmed by PW Insider, and despite reports of a possible Aja Kong vs. Awesome Kong match, or even Awesome Kong joining AEW's ranks as a producer, she'll now have to forge her own path as a free agent. Kong isn't the only name gone from AEW this week, as the company has parted ways with Shanna following reports of mistreating extras. According to Fightful, Shanna's departure was expected as far back as April, and fans shouldn't expect her back, as there were, quote, issues with her and some of the other wrestlers, especially extras. No exact instance of bullying or misconduct was mentioned in the report, and Shanna has not responded to those claims yet. 
Shanna's last AEW match was a loss to Layla Hirsch on the April 12th AEW Dark Elevation after missing much of the past year. Shanna competed on Dynamite in February 2020 before missing time, and when she returned in November, she became a regular on Dark and Dark Elevation. We'll have to see where Shanna ends up next, but she is no longer with AEW, and whilst it wasn't confirmed that AEW chose not to renew her contract exclusively because of these claims, they certainly didn't help matters for her. And we're ending today with John Cena, who referred to Taiwan as a country whilst promoting Fast and Furious 9, and despite a groveling apology to China, who see Taiwan as belonging to them, the damage has already been done. Whilst Fast 9 opened strong enough in China, the movie's second week was an absolute bust, and many are arguing that this is down to Cena's comments. It's worth mentioning that the reviews have been absolutely atrocious, but it's impossible to prove if Cena bias played a part in those opinions. Fast 9's box office fell a whopping 85% from its opening weekend number of $136 million and had made just $185.3 million by its second weekend. For comparison, Fast and Furious 7 was at $390.9 million by its second weekend in China when it released in 2015, while Fate of the Furious was at $392.8 million at this time in 2017. We are curious to see how the film will do in the West, as Cena's apology has only hurt his reputation over here, and time will tell if the former superstar can repair his damaged reputation. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.